Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the following result that is very intuitive, and then we'll look at four examples. So if fn, so the values of our function f at an integer n equals the nth term of our sequence, a n, and the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity equals l, where l is either a real number or negative or positive infinity, then the limit of our sequence a n as n goes to infinity is also equal to l. So let's see why this result is very intuitive. And if we simply visualize the two statements, the two limits, we'll see why if this equals l, this also equals l. And this will be useful essentially when we have the limit of a sequence that yields a case where we want to use L'Hopital's rule. And again, when we use L'Hopital's rule, we have to differentiate. So we have to go from a discrete variable to one that is continuous. And so every time you have the limit of a sequence where you want to use L'Hopital's rule, you'll jump over the continuous analog. And if this limit is a real number or negative or positive infinity, the limit of the sequence is the same. And you can look at this even not geometrically, but simply algebraically. If you replace x by n, then you have the limit as n goes to infinity of f of n equals l, but f of n is simply a n. But let's visualize this, and hopefully this will make the result even more intuitive. I'll make two assumptions. I'll assume that the, c the function f is non-negative and increasing, just to make a slightly simpler picture. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. The limit, and again in the picture we'll assume that the limit is a real number, And if we look at this limit, we are saying that by assumption, as x goes to infinity, so as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the y values f of x are getting closer and closer to l. So the graph of your function may look something like this. So essentially here, l is a horizontal asymptote of your function. And you can see, so the entire continuous function is getting closer and closer to L as you move further and further down the real axis. But look at the terms of your sequence in this picture. A1 is F1. A2 is F2. A3 is F3, and so forth. A4 is F4, A5 is F5, A6, F6, A7, F7, A8, F8. And so you can clearly see if the entire continuous function f of x approaches the asymptote L as x goes to infinity, then the sequence, the discrete points that follow along the curve, have to also approach the same limit, the same asymptote. And that's really the essence of this result, so very intuitive. If the whole curve approaches L in the limit, discrete points on it must also approach the same limit. Let's now look at a few examples of this result. Suppose we have the sequence n cubed over e to the n, n going from 1 to infinity. You could, of course, write the first few terms of the sequence. So 1 over e, 8 over e squared, 27 over e cubed, and so forth. We're asking. Will the sequence converge? 
therefore approach a real unique fixed value in the limit, or will this diverge? Well, so we want the limit of a n as n goes to infinity. And if you look at your case, as n goes to infinity, so does n cubed and e to the n, and so you have an infinity over infinity case. So you may want to use L'Hopital's rule, but remember, you can't differentiate a discrete list of real numbers, so you then look at the continuous limit of x cubed over e to the x. We have an infinity over infinity case. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Once again, we have an infinity over infinity case. Still in the determinate, we can apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. Differentiate 3x squared, you get 6x. Differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x. Again, we have an infinity over infinity case. In the determinate, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Differentiate 6x, you get 6. Differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x. And now we have an interesting case which is 6 over infinity, which of course yields 0, and that is our limit. So because the continuous function x cubed over e to the x shrinks to 0 as x approaches positive infinity, the discrete points on the continuous function must also converge to the same value. So our sequence converges to 0. So if you use your calculator and compute these terms as you move along your sequence, they will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. What about the sequence to the n over n? As n goes from 1 to infinity, the terms will be 2 over 1, 4 over 2, 8 over 3, 16 over 4, 32 over 5, 64 over 6, and so forth. And we're asking, will the sequence converge or diverge as n goes to infinity? Well, as n goes to infinity, to the n also goes to infinity, so we have an infinity over infinity case. We want to use L'Hopital's rule, but again we cannot differentiate a discrete list of numbers, and so we jump over to the continuous analog. We can apply L'Hopital's rule which will give us, well, the derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x ln of 2 over the derivative of x, which is 1. So when x goes to infinity, 2 to the x goes to infinity times ln of 2, which is positive, and so the whole thing goes to infinity. Because the continuous function converges to, in, well, not converges, but blows up in the limit, the discrete points along the curve must also blow up. So our sequence diverges, but specifically by blowing up to infinity. So if you used again your calculator and computed these terms, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger out of bounds in the limit. Let's look now at another problem. A 
I'm not going to write out these terms, but again we're asking whether our sequence converges or diverges. And it's clear that we have here again an infinity over infinity case. But here you have to refrain yourself. It's not because you can use L'Hopital's rule that you should use L'Hopital's rule. We can here provide a much simpler solution. We have a rational function. We can divide top and bottom by 1 over the largest power of n, which is n squared. So we can do 1 over n squared over 1 over n squared. If we multiply out the numerator and the denominator, we will be left with 1 plus 4 over n plus 5 over n squared over 3 plus 1 over n plus 1 over n squared. And now the limit is trivial as n goes to infinity. 4n goes to 0, 5 over n squared goes to 0, 1 over n goes to 0, 1 over n squared goes to 0, and in the limit we obtain 1 third. And so the sequence does converge to 1 third. So if you did calculate these, this fraction when n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth, you would find that the terms are getting closer and closer to 1 over 3. And you can try to compare using L'Hopital's rule here, which will require you two additional steps and if the degree was larger than 2, say 50, then L'Hopital's rule becomes extremely inefficient, but this method will always allow you to find the limit in, at most, one line. Always keep in mind, only use L'Hopital's rule if you absolutely have to, as in the previous two cases. If your limit is a rational function of n, don't use L'Hopital's rule, use this much simpler method. Let's look at one last example of a very simple looking sequence, but that is not entirely obvious. The sequence is the nth root of n, as n goes from 1 to infinity. Well, the 1th root of 1 is simply 1, then we have the square root of 2, then the cube root of 3, then the 4th root of 4, the 5th root of 5, and so forth. And again, we're asking, as n approaches infinity, as we look further and further down our sequence, will the terms be getting closer and closer to a unique fixed real number? And you could try here with your calculator, taking, say, the 20th root of 20, and you will find that this will be really close to 1. And so just with your calculator numerically, you will see that these numbers, when n is big, are really close to 1. So you could guess that the limit will be 1. But of course the guess is not sufficient, we have to prove it. So let's see. And I will rewrite the nth root as a power of 1 over n. This will make for a more explicit case. As n goes to infinity, our base goes to infinity. But as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. So we have an infinity to the 0 case. This is an exceptional case where if we use the logarithmic function, then we can use L'Hopital's rule. And of course we have to jump over to the continuous analog. So I will let L be the limit of x to the 1 over x. And then to transform this into a case where we can use L'Hopital's rule, we have to find a way to bring the exponent down, and that will be done using the logarithmic function. So the ln of L will be the limit as x goes to infinity 
of the line of this expression the properties of logarithmic functions I can move the exponent outside as 1 over x times ln of x which I can of course simply rewrite as a single fraction and this gives us an infinity over infinity case which for now we can use L'Hopital's rule So if you differentiate ln of x, you get 1 over x over the derivative of x, which is 1. Well, 1 over x over 1 is just 1 over x, and the limit is clearly 0. But you have to be careful. We were looking for l, and now we have that the ln of l is 0. Well, you want to undo the natural logarithmic function, so use the natural exponential exponentiate both sides with the natural exponential e is the inverse of ln so they cancel and so l is e to the 0 which is simply 1 so the limit of x to the 1 over x as x goes to infinity exists and is equal to 1 and since the continuous function goes to 1 in the limit the discrete points along the function must also converge to 1. And so our intuition, if we had found these terms of the calculator, we would have found that they are indeed getting, as our intuition suggested, closer and closer and closer to 1. And so the sequence converges to 1. And that's it.